Hey guys, so this video is going to be talking about uh, testing oil pressure on vehicle engines and uh, any possibly small engines too that has a oil pressure and you can hook a gauge to it. So th this will uh, this is extremely handy on a lot of newer vehicles that just have an oil pressure switch that indicate low oil pressure. So if you get an oil pressure light coming on, uh, it could just be your sensor bad. This is the way you test that. Uh, it does come with a, a paper showing the the specs for a lot of vehicles. You need to look up your vehicle to see what your oil pressure is supposed to be when it's cold and when it's hot and when it's idling, when it's running at a certain RPM. Uh, this is just going to be kind of a summary of it. We're testing this from a 1986 Jeep Comanche. Uh, it's not a very common truck but it's got the 2.8 V6 in it which was what was used in the, the 80's S10's and Blazers. So it's the same GM engine they put in this. The 87's and later had either a four cylinder or a straight six. Uh, this one's got the V6 in it, so it makes it kind of even more unique. But uh, anyway, I'm having a, a slight oil pressure problem when the engine gets hot and I come to a stoplight, the oil pressure will drop down real low to like five PSI according to my gauge I installed on the inside and the light will come on and sometimes it'll flicker but as soon as I give it gas you know, the, or the oil pressure comes up and the light goes off so I expect the engine just needs rebuilt, the bearings are worn or the weak oil pump more than likely so uh, I just kind of want to hook this up and make sure I'm getting an accurate reading on my gauge I put on the inside so uh, let's get started on it okay so every vehicle is going to be different where the oil pressure hooks up to it and this one I did something a little different on how well you can see but I got a T fitting here coming out of the block and you see that small hose at the bottom right there that's going to my oil pressure gauge I installed on the dash and this is the actual oil pressure switch or oil sending unit as some people refer to it and this one just has a simple wire plugged into it so we're going to unhook that and leave the mechanical gauge I got installed inside which we'll look at here in a second and that hose will hook right into this where it goes into that T-fitting right there. So if your vehicle just has, if you're working on something older like this and it just has a uh, <coughs> oil pressure light but you want to install like an aftermarket type of uh, gauge setup, this is a good way of doing it. Just extend that out to a T-fitting and where you can still have your light. That way you'll be more apt to see the light come on if you lose oil pressure then you can still just watch the gauge too since it's hooked up. So that's a neat little trick here. Uh, a lot of people have done that over the years. And uh, if you see it's got, it's, I don't have an oil leak right here. It, it just has oil on it because uh, sometimes this will blow oil out of my breather I put on here. You see there's a little bit of oil right there. So that's what that's from. But this is not actually leaking right here. So. This is the type of aftermarket gauge cluster I'm talking about. It's got the temperature, voltage, in this case oil pressure. Uh, sometimes there's slightly variance on this. If you wonder what the axle lock switch is, the vacuum lines were so messed up on this, I had to just hook it up manually to lock the front axle to uh, get the four-wheel drive to work. So that's what that's about. Uh, four-wheel drive works great. You flip the axle on, pull it up in four-wheel drive, rock it back and forth a couple, about once or twice, and the axle will lock in, and you're good to go in four-wheel drive. This truck does great in snow, mud, and everything. I've never had this truck stuck. You know, knock on wood. But uh, anyway, getting back to the gauge. Let me show you what we're reading here with the engine idling. We're just a little bit above 100 degrees. It takes a minute for the oil pressure to climb. But we're idling. Like I said, the engine's not completely up to temperature. We're reading about 40 PSI, so give it a little gas. We're getting about 50 PSI. When this engine's cold, when you first start, it'll max out about 60 to 70. But uh, you see right now, with the idling, it's showing 40 PSI. But when it's hot and in gear, it drops down to almost zero at stoplights when you're idling. So we'll look at that here in a minute too. I'm not going to go into too much detail on hooking this up. Uh, basically just unscrew the uh, the sensor that I showed you. In this case it screws into that T-fitting. Usually screws right into the engine block. 
this hose will screw right into that. If you need to adapt it or extend it out, you got an assortment of fittings here that come with it to adapt it to anything. Uh, this is eighth inch, quarter inch, just all different sizes for everything that you need. So with all this, and in this case, this should screw right into that T-fitting. But if not, we'll have to find an adapter or another fitting to extend it or something. So, uh, yeah, let me hook this up off camera real quick and we'll look at what I did. Uh, just to speed the video up a little bit. The only reason I'm not showing too much detail on hooking it up because every vehicle is going to be different. And there's just no need to make the video too long with showing what fittings I need to use. So we'll just look at it here at the end. So when I try to take the sensor off, the whole T-fitting wanted to come off too. So I figured I'd just show you real quick how the setup is. So this is what the sensor looks like. Ordinarily it would screw directly into your block and you can get like a socket on this if you get the right size or just a crescent wrench or anything it will get a hold of it. Uh, so that's what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off the T-fitting. I just wanted to show it to you. And that's the size, and that's the adapter going to the uh, aftermarket uh, oil pressure gauge where the hose connects to it. Okay, hey, with the idling, you know, we're showing really low oil pressure according to this gauge. So uh, we might be lower oil pressure than I thought we had. Okay, so we're up to operating temperature now. It's in park, right on the loop drop in reverse with holding the brake. See, the bottom is out completely to zero. I just wanted to verify that, you know, I was losing oil pressure, but, you know, as soon as I give it gas, or, you know, it comes right back up. So, I mean, there's nothing, like, major wrong, but it's, I don't know how accurate this gauge is because this should be reading a lot more than this. Let me hook the everything back up like it was, and we'll look at the the old gauge again while the engine's hot. Okay, so everything's hooked up back just like it was. I'm going to start it make make sure there's no leaks, let it warm back up again, and then we'll look at the gauges on the inside. Alright, so right now we're almost at 190, which is what it usually wants to run at. Um, oil pressure's hanging on a little bit above 20 according to this gauge. Now let me drop it in reverse, hold the brake, and we'll see how far it drops right now. They're dropping about 16 psi, I would say. So now let's go run it, get it real good and hot, and we'll see what it does. Okay, so I just drove about 10 miles. About 35 40 miles an hour the whole time. We're up to 190. Battery's reading good. Oil pressure, we're right at about, well, about 15 16, somewhere around there. Okay, now I noticed the oil pressure lights off. Let me drop it in reverse. This is an automatic. Okay, now the oil pressure light starts flickering. If I turn the steering wheel, It'll stay on solid when the engine loads a little bit more. And the oil pressure, you know, it's like five, if that. But, you know, if I give it a little gas, it'll come right back up. I was holding the brake there. But as soon as, the, as soon as you give it gas, it'll come right back off. But I just kind of wanted to verify that I was losing that much oil pressure. And, uh, Hooking up that tester pretty much just sums it up, you know. So, and like I said, the engine does need to rebuild. It's got over 100,000 miles on it, and they're probably rough 100,000 miles since it was an off road vehicle. And this was a farm truck at one point, so that's a lot of idling time on the engine. So, that's the automotive part of this video. The next part's going to be going to that uh, 10 horsepower diesel engine I got on my little tractor. And we're going to do a oil test for Nick. I try to hook up one of them gauges like I had in the Jeep. And it pegged it and blew it up because there's so much oil pressure. And I looked it up, and it's it's over it's between two and three hundred psi on average. So uh, this goes up to five hundred. So this will definitely cover. We we'll get an exact number on the oil pressure on it, which I don't know why the oil pressure is so high. Okay, so now I got it hooked up to the ten horsepower diesel. See right here's the oil pressure hookup on it. And the oil pump will be right here behind that triangle-shaped plate. So we got ran over here. 
Well, let's get started and see what kind of reading we get. Well guys, if you got any questions or comments or anything, uh, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I'm a little slow on answering comments right now, but I will try to answer the newest ones. So uh, thanks for watching guys, and we'll catch you on the next video.